Hello guys, S2W here as your average consumer. Back with another review video of a surprisingly hyped up sneaker from Adidas. The info about this new sneaker silhouette has been out for some time, and finally, they have hit the stores today on March 1st of 2017. They are the Adidas Iniki Runner that I have here for a review. For those who don't know, I live in Toronto, Ontario of Canada. And in Canada, we're famous for not getting much stock from Adidas, so many popular sneakers are very tough to get. Online at adidas.ca, two colors dropped and they were the reds and the navies. But for each model, only 50 pairs were available, so around 3 to 5 pairs per each size. I just went downtown Toronto and picked these up pretty easily at the Adidas OG store, a quick in and out. A lot more sneaker boutiques released them online, but they also ended up selling out quickly. The popularity of these were pretty big apparently, but I guess it's because of the fact that this is a completely quote unquote, new silhouette with present day technology, boost cushioning material. So let's take a closer look at these new sneakers. The first thing that this reminded me of is Adidas' past designs of the Gazelle or Samba sneakers, and that is practically where the design of this Aniki came from. Inspired by the design of those swift 1970 runners, basically combining heritage of the past into present day's modern design. First of all, the overall shape of this sneaker doesn't look bad, and in my opinion, isn't anything too special though. At the lateral side, we see Adidas' staple 3 stripes in white with a saw-like pattern for its edges. This stripe feels very smooth by touch and is actually held on top of the fabric, so it doesn't sit flush on the fabric material. Next to one of the stripe is the word Iniki in a glossy copper-like colorway. According to Adidas, Iniki supposedly means, in the Hawaiian language, strong and sharp wind, as well as to rip or punch. I guess they essentially wanted the shoe to create a long lasting impact in history? Your guess is as good as mine. Let me know in the comments if you have your own definition of Iniki. On the topic of this fabric material, the textile feels soft and flat, as it's a two-way stretch mesh upper. They are somewhat stretchy, but compared to something like Prime Knit, those are way more elastic than these. I would categorize this upper material as form-fitting more than stretchable in my opinion. Other than the mesh upper, we also see some suede material constructed as the toe guard, the heel cup, and also eyelets of the shoe. On the medial side, visual wise, it's basically a mirrored version of the lateral side, minus the Aniki branding near the midfoot here. And looking up towards the sneaker, they came with flat navy laces to complement the overall colorway of this shoe, with an additional copper-like metal lace tip at the end. As for the tongue, there is an Adidas Originals Trayfoil logo and the words the brand with the three stripes in English and German in a glossy copper colorway. The tongue itself is a glossy mesh material, where if you look closely, it will reflect light and show its evident shine. The tongue is surprisingly though, stitched onto the side under the suede eyelet fabric, and essentially making the shoe an illusionary two-piece upper if we had not known about this. But the tongue left hanging out at the top looks pretty old school in my opinion, which fits perfectly with its design scheme. At the back of the sneaker, we have Adidas' Trayfoil logo again in navy printed on top of a white, tough by touch leather material. We see the suede heel support here with two large mesh windows, which I'm assuming gives the shoe more flexibility near the heel area whereas this suede heel cup gives support and structure to the shoe. The midsole is the main point of this sneaker, which Adidas implemented their top-of-the-line present-day cushioning technology, Boost Material. They are known for its squishiness, offering the feel of walking on clouds, and its ability to bounce back from pushing off the ground that helps us conserve energy. Honestly, anything nowadays with Boost is becoming so popular, and I think this is why this shoe is getting so much attention right now. Inside the shoe, we see a non-removable white layer of insole with Adidas' branding and slogans. According to Adidas, this is an ortholite sock liner that gives additional comfort and performance while wearing the shoe. We do not see any boost material from here as I'm guessing that the insole is laying on top of it. The point of entry for our feet is quite wide here, created with the comfort fit of a sock construction and easy slip-on fit in mind. Even the mesh upper at the midfoot area is thin enough that you can see through them meaning ventilation should be pretty decent as well. Flipping over the shoe, these Iniki features a gum outsole to even out the vintage yet modern aesthetics. This outsole is webbed and is made out of rubber, so traction should be alright with most surfaces. Near the heel of this outsole, you will see another Adidas and its Trayfoil logo for further branding. Anyways, here are some Adidas Iniki runner in the navy colorway fit footages. Before I go into fit, I made a rookie error. 
I was in a rush while buying these shoes, and it turned out the customer rep gave me a size I did not tell them to bring out. My true to size is 10.5, but they brought me a 10. Because of the stretch mesh upper, I can still fit in these, but essentially, they are at my half size down. They are too tight on me, so my toes are somewhat bunched up near the forefoot area. So fit wise, I would recommend going true to size for length wise. At the back, because they have a sock construction in mind, the hind foot area feels wide and spacious, which fits very comfortably there. But in my opinion, because there's a suede toe guard at the front where the toe box is, even if I went true to size, I feel like my big toe will still be under that structured suede material, and I feel like my toes can't flex or shift in place as comfortably as some of Adidas's other models. And I say this because the stretch mesh upper is very form-fitting, so when it suddenly transitions into suede material, it feels very structured out of nowhere. Maybe because this shoe is my half size down? I don't know. But if that toe guard was not there, I think they would have felt way better. Comfort and boost wise, they don't feel bad on feet at all. You won't feel as much boost cushioning at the front, but at the heel area, you do feel some bouncy properties. More than the NMD R1s I would say, close to the NMD R2s, maybe a little bit more, but they're pretty close in my opinion for the R2s. I forgot to mention, but the midfoot area of the midsole does turn really narrow, like the Nike Flyknit Racers. My wide feet is spilling out of the mesh material at the midfoot area, so I'm not sure if I like the visual appeal of that, but the stretch mesh comfort still holds up pretty well. Price wise, they are $160 Canadian before tax, a shoe that's not too expensive given the fact that it has full length boost. Obviously compared to other full length boost shoes, and the pricing of those have skyrocketed in Canada. But as a general lifestyle sneaker, and you're not doing any running at all, these are pretty nice. If you don't compare to other Adidas's popular drops lately. As always, throw me some likes if you liked the video, and let me know in the comments if you were able to grab a pair of these Adidas Iniki Runner, as they were sold out pretty much quickly everywhere online in Canada. That's it for today, S2W signing off.